All right, uh, let's get started here. So um, we're going to continue on with uh, lists. So last time we quickly introduced the list. So um, here's a list right here. Notice that we're, um, we have a series of numbers and um, separated by commas inside brackets. Now lists can also have um, strings in them. They don't just have the numbers. It could be a list of words. Something like this. So a list is basically an ordered sequence of, of objects. Um, you can print the entire list. Or you could print just individual elements. Like let's say you want the zeroth element. That's two. Um, if you want the length of the list, seven. So there's seven numbers here. And um, if you want to access the uh, the last number, it's um, L6. But also, there's a trick in Python, negative one is actually the last number two. So you can sort of save a little bit of time in your coding and not check the length. But I, I, I don't think it's a great shortcut to use. Okay, so um, going back to L again, let's just, just practice modifying it. So let's say we, um, we want to pop the list. So now there's, um, now if you look at L, you can see that um, there's only, uh, we're missing the last element. Now, um, one thing is you can go into this next box and L is still available. The, all the boxes are connected and whichever box you run last, the next box will know the results of the previous box, but um, it doesn't have to be above it. The boxes do not have to be in any like linear order. The only thing that matters is the order that you run them. But it's probably best to go from top down, top to down. Otherwise, it would get very confusing. All right, so um, we could pop again. And each time we pop, let's print, let's print L. If we run it again, and again, you see we're losing everything until there's nothing left to pop, and then it gives us an error. All right, so let's put, let's put things back in. All right, so L is empty. That's the empty list. So L dot append. Um, one, put a few ones. Notice you're allowed to repeat numbers. Um, lists are not sets, so that means you could, um, could have duplicates, of course. All right, let's put a few threes in there. And another two. All right, so let's say you want to remove the zero, one, two, three, the fourth element. So what you would do is you would say L dot pop four. And notice uh, we lost the, uh, the zeroth element. I mean the fourth element, sorry. All right, so we have our, we have our list. Um, let's go back to here again. And um, let's sort L. So we could say L dot sort. And then if you, if you print L, if you look at L, 
you could see it's sorted from least to greatest. And you could also sort it in the opposite way. Um, reverse equals true. And that'll sort it um, backwards from greatest to bound to least. And you could also sort M. And let's, uh, let's see what M looks like now. Notice now it's in, um, notice now it's in alphabetical order. So same works for, uh, for letters. Now let's say you don't want to modify the original, the original L. So we want a sorted version of L. So it's a L equals sorted L. And then if you print L and you print uh, S, so let me run it first. As you can see, um, the original L stays the same. Well, the original L stays the same, right? But uh, S is now the sorted copy, so it's a copy. Um, this introduces something called reference. So, see, S and L are two distinct lists in different parts of memory. But let me show you what happens when you um, when you simply say like u is equal to l. So if you say u is equal to l and, and you print u, then you print l, they are the same, right? What, what's happening is u and l are pointing to the same, to the same um, location in memory. So U and L are just aliases for the same memory block. So there's really no difference. So what that means is if you say U bracket two is equal to 60, then look what happens to U and L. They both change because you've changed the actual physical memory location uh, referenced by the index two, the index two position of both U and L, since they're both pointing to the same memory block. So just just keep that in mind. There's you can copy things, and you can just reference them. So for example, if you say U is a uh, deep copy, copy works too, but deep copy works even if these objects are more complex, which I'll, I'll show you later in the course. Um, I think I have to um, import deep copy from a library. So let me just stick with copy. Uh, copy is not defined. Um, all right, so we get to something like this, very easy. How to copy a list in Python. So copy is correct. Um, let me just see. The copy method doesn't take any parameters. I might be confusing with a different one, so like this. L dot copy looks like the way you do it. All right, so U is a copy of L. And now there are two distinct lists. They're, they're, um, the deep copy thing, by the way, I th maybe you need a library, maybe you need to import a library. So let me just show you what that's about. Um, so Python deep copy. Copy dot keep deep copy. You have to import copy. All right, so let's try that out. 
import copy and then we can and then we could say u equals deep copy of l oh, sorry um, copy that deep copy all right there we go so this deep copy is like the, the most thorough way to copy something if if um, if l were a list of lists and just to show you what that means you know you could, you could also say l is equal to um, a list of lists we're going to see this later when we study numpy it's basically a, a matrix which I'll, I'll teach you about right so print L. So it's a list of lists. So if you say print L of um, one, it's going to print the middle list. All right, so let's try one little exercise. So maybe pause the video for a minute. See if you can figure out how to do um, exercise 5.03 here. Write a for loop create a list of the first 10 Fibonacci numbers starting with 1, 1. So the way the Fibonacci's work is, um, you know, the first element is, uh, is 1, the second is 1, and then the third would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. To get the next one, you add the 1 and a 2, and you get 3. 2 and a 3 add together, you get 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 11. And so forth. So see if you can write code to, um, to generate the first 10 Fibonacci numbers. So I'll give you a couple minutes. All right, so let's uh, give it a try. Okay, so let's start. Can okay, I undo this? No. All right, so let's start by saying f is equal to 1 comma 1. So that's our 
that would be our um, that would be the initial um, list, right? So for i in range, well, we want to do something eight more times, right? So we need a range eight. So let's calculate the next the next value. So C is equal to. So when I is zero, that would correspond to the first one. When I is one, it'll correspond to the second one. So let's add up F I plus F bracket I plus one. And that, that would get us the next one. So then we would append to f the number c that we just calculated. Um, and then let's print the, um, the list of the numbers, right? All right, let's see if it worked. All right, so yeah, it looks good. And um, let's just want to double check the length. It, it has to be eight since we started with two. But you can see. And you can do this as far as you like. You know, you could do a uh, hundred of these. And you can see it's very fast. Um, this is the fastest way to generate the Fibonacci numbers. So this is 102 if you wanted 100. All together, you put a 98 here. All right. Tuples. Tuples are going to look kind of strange in the beginning, but um, they're basically like lists, except you're not allowed to modify them once they're created. So we could print the it's like a list except use parentheses. Use uh, curly, um, use uh, round brackets instead of the square brackets, right? And um, watch what happens if you uncomment this here. And you try to say x bracket two is nine. Uh, error. You're not allowed to do that. Once a uh, once a tuple is created those numbers are frozen. Now, nothing is stopping you though from recreating the tuple. And you could say this, you could say X is equal to one, say nine, three, four. So if you really needed to change um, X, you, you basically destroy and recreate it. So that's fine. But why, why do they do this? The reason is um, is because it's great for packaging together uh, data. So you could say u is equal to. All right, so let's say um, order points. X is equal to two. Y is equal to three. Let's say u is equal to x comma y. And then you could just keep X and Y together as U. See, so if you print U, two comma three. All right, so later you'll see more about tuples. They're important and they're a great way to keep together, keep things together. All right, I think we could skip this. This is a neat exercise. I recommend you try to do this. Um, try to figure out um, when the teacher will break 100,000. Um, you can ask me in class if you're not able to figure this out. We we'll definitely have time in class to um, to do you know to do uh, more programming projects. Okay. Let's try this just very quickly. Ask the user to enter um, numbers and enter Q when they should stop entering. 
So A equals input, enter number, Q quits. All right. So while A is not equal to, so why A is not equal to, you could do it like this. Well, A is not equal to Q, or actually it'll be end, A is not equal to big Q. And then you would enter the loop. But let me show you a better way, a way I like better. You would say, while A is not in the tuple, Q, big Q. This is a more elegant way to say it. So while A is not one of the numbers in that tuple, and this is why you like tuples are great, because you could, and you might say, why don't I just use a list? Right, if you're if you're following everything, you you should be asking yourself, why not do it with brackets? And it turns out you, you can do it with brackets. This works fine too, but there's a technical reason why you shouldn't do that. And the reason is, when you create a list like this, there's an overhead, and it um, it allocates probably a lot more memory and uh, it takes more time but a tuple it knows it's never going to change so it just finds a little bit of memory to hold the two characters and it's done and uh, basically python can do that faster it's more efficient for python to, to to use a tuple than a list so use a tuple if you if you can if you're writing performance code but anyway in python you might not be writing performance code but Okay, so while A is not one of those, so let's um, store these as numbers. So let's convert them to floats. So let X be the float conversion of A. This could trigger an error if you entered like the letter B, but we're not gonna worry about that. All right, we need a, we need a list, right? So let's call our list Q. Well, let's call it L. L is a good, and it's uh, um, initialize an empty list. So L dot append uh, X. And then this is important. We need the, um, we need the next um, number from the user, right? So we have to get the next number from the user. So let's, um, let's request it from the user. So let's just copy line four and uh, put it here. So this way we get the next number and then we go back and iterate around to the loop. Okay, now um, we wanna sort the numbers, right? So L dot sort and um, display the max and the min. So it's actually an easy way to um, do this. The min will be the smallest and the, uh, the first number and the max will be the last, but you could just do this. Print min of L and print max of L. All right, uh, I put an extra E in here. Sorry about that. I realized I spelled it wrong. Quits. All right, so uh, four, six, two, nine, zero, negative one, three. And then I'm going to quit. And there's my min and my max. And if you want to see the list, um, Print L, and there's the, there's our sorted list of, of the numbers. All right.
uh, functions. So functions are um, a neat way to divide up the um, program into many parts. So let, let's let's try some basic functions. So define function function um, f, and we're going to basically say return x plus one. Okay. So that's a function. And if we say um, f of 5, answer is 6. If we say f of 7, answer is 8. But functions could be more complicated than just that. Like let's say we wanted to add up the first, let's say let's use a variable n. Let's say we wanted to add up the first n numbers. Okay, so let's say we want to write a function. I'll write it down here. Write a function to add up the first n numbers. All right, so it's basically a little program. So remember the code to add up the first n numbers for i in range 1 to n plus 1 s plus equals n, uh, i, sorry. i is the index variable, right? i is what um, changes. All right, so what that does is it um, takes our running sum, which is s, and it um, adds to it all the numbers from 1 to n. Okay, now we're outside of the for loop, but we're still in the function. So we're still indented one level, but not two. So we're going to just return s. So now every time we want to find the sum of the first n numbers, we could just access the function. So see, the f sum of the first seven numbers is 28. The sum of the first five numbers is 15. Sum of the first 100 numbers is 50 50 right so that's the basics of a function now the function can also have more than one parameter so let's say we wanted to add up the numbers from n to m n to m so we could give it two parameters and then instead of starting at um at one we'd start at n and we would put an m plus one here right so what this does is now we can add the numbers from let's say 100 to 200 inclusive all right and there it is uh, 100 to 201 all right so um, you know to show you the speed of python Let's say you want to go from 3 to 2,000 to 20,001. Pretty fast. Another zero there. Another zero. Another zero. So now it's finally slowing down a bit, right? So it took a second. And you should see this should be about 10 times fast, uh, slower, right? Each time you do it, it should take about 10 times as long as the time before. So these, this number is big, but it's not really that big. Python is actually very slow. If you wrote this program in C++, it would probably answer it instantly. You know, it's, it's literally like 100 times faster. All right, so um, functions can, can call other functions. And um, often what we have is a, a main function. A main function is sort of like the starting point. 
and you could just call the main function. Notice the function has no parameters. Uh, and the func this function happens, the main function happens to not, happens to not um, have any return value. So functions typically have a value, they return something, and um, they have parameters, inputs. So they have inputs and uh, return values. Okay. So what's happening, I just want to show you something here. Um, let me make a, let me make an easier pr um, program. So s equals zero, x equals four, um, y equals three, s equals x plus y. I just want to mention something about functions. So see how there's an x and a y here? They only live in the scope of this function name. Then we pass x and y to, um, to this function, to my function y. So what that means is the four goes here, and the 12 goes there to the y. And, but we didn't actually use that in our program here. We simply said now x is 4 and y is 3. But these x and y stay the same. They, they never change. Now, we said s is x plus y. And that s gets returned to the value of the function and it goes to z. So let's do something more interesting. So let's say, uh, let's say s is equal to two times x plus 10 times y. All right, so that's our function. So let's give it a try, see what happens. 128. So you can calculate that out. Now, watch what happens if we interchange the value of x and y. yx. So what happens here, and this is what, if you're new to programming, you're going to have to, you might have to watch some more videos on this. And email me if this is confusing to you. What's happening right here is The y, which is 12, takes the place of x in this function. The, the x and y and the y and x don't matter. What only matters is the position, the relative position of the variables. So the y, which is 12, takes the place of x. And the x, which is 4, takes the place of y here. So as far as my function 1 is concerned, x is 12 and y is 4. And in fact, hopefully you realize you don't even need to use x and y. You could use s and t, and then you could put an s and a t here. And the s and t here just go into the x and y here. And it has nothing to do with this s here. It's a totally independent. All the variables in my function 1 are in a different scope. They're like a different universe. They don't, um, they don't uh, interact with each other. The reason this is so is in a big programming project, you could have many different people working on um, different, um, different parts of the, of the program running different functions, and they could use or not use the same variables and will make no difference as long as the functions have um, as long as the functions have the proper way of uh, interfacing with each other and how do they interface well from the inputs and the um, and the outputs okay 
So that's the basic idea of functions. Um, we're not going to be going very heavy into functional programming. We you know our goal is to do more machine learning and stuff. So um, we're not going, you know, but, but uh, I encourage you to um, maybe review this a little bit. And when we get to our function should be pretty straightforward. There is something called recursion, which is a very neat um, aspect of functions. But I really don't think we're going to see it. And if we do see it, um, I'll definitely explain it, you know, when, when, it, when we need it. All right, anything interesting here? Write a function whose parameter is a list of three numbers. The function rotates the list. So if you pass it 215, it returns 152. Well, why don't we just do that? That looks pretty simple. All right, so define f, and it's going to take three variables. It's, going to, it's actually going to take a, a list. So you want it to uh, take a list, so it's just called the list L. But remember, um, L is, a, uh, is, a, is going to be a list. So you can pass lists, and we will. All right. So um, what this will do is um, we want to rotate the list, right? So essentially, what we're going to do is um, pop the last element from uh, from L uh, from L. So right, that takes the last element, and then we want to um, insert it. So insert is the way that you could put it, it's the opposite of pop, insert it at index zero. Okay, so when you pass a list, it passes as a reference, which means you're not passing a copy, you're actually passing the, um, the, the actual list. All right, so we're not returning it. Oh yeah, we are returning something. Um, it, and it, it, we actually do want it to return, so Let's return uh, L. You could do this with a copy if you wanted to, but it's, uh, I mean, um, so maybe if you didn't want to actually modify L, you would do it like this. Maybe use another list. U equals L dot copy. And, um, and then let's do this with U. And then um, let's and then let's return you. You have to be careful. Basically, what I'm saying is you have to be careful with lists because they pass by reference. So you you, you may, the call and code may not want um, L to change. All right. So let's try out the function. So let's let um, remember you don't have to call them L U or anything. One two three. And then we could say um, z is equal to, oh, sorry, insert um, x at position 0. I think that's right, but we'll have to check it. So z is equal to f of y. And then let's just see what y is equal to, how z is equal to. All right, um, it looks like it maybe did not work. I think I reversed these two. Zero and x. Yes, that's correct. So see, y started out as one, two, three, and then we put the three here and moved everything over. All right, so let's stop here, since um, I, I didn't get to ask any questions. Um,
you know, uh, I don't want to overload you with too much material. So um, keep going through the, um, if you want to try some of these midterm review material questions, they're good, they're good programs to try. Um, and I have all the answers here. I definitely recommend that. And uh, dictionaries, that's what we're really going to use because they're a great way to store data. And then um, we're almost done. Then we'll just get to jump to classes and then we'll be ready to um, start being in you know, learning machine learning. All right, so have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. And uh, I'll see you all uh, soon.